The Orlando Magic continue to try to stay in the fight, but oh boy, is it tough. A uh, frustrating and mixed feelings day at the Amway Center as the homestand closes. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is November 17th, 2022. My name is Philip Rossenreich. I'm the expert insight editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic have a lot of work to do. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about the Orlando Magic's loss to the Minnesota Timberwolves, the fact that they're fighting, the fact that they're not fighting enough, the fact that they're injured, the fact that they have enough despite the injuries. A lot of contradictions today as the Orlando Magic fall to the Minnesota Timberwolves 126 to 108. We'll get into all of that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. No matter who your team is, no matter when you listen to us, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your team, part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Uh, the best way to kind of dive into this game against the Minnesota Timberwolves is to start with the hero of the night um, and, and start with what we saw from Jalen Suggs and how his presence just changed everything and showed how much on a knife's edge everything was. First off, Jalen Suggs played the game wearing a mask. Um, he uh, had a had a Band-Aid over his nose at shoot-around in the morning. Um, but, my God, like, this team is the walking wounded where would this team be if Jalen Suggs just didn't have whatever mental, you know, football mentality, whatever is inside him that just said that just like picks himself up off the mat, brushes off any anything, and just gets back to work? Um, you know, we're gonna dive into injuries in the last segment, and, and I want to just continue to make. I have to make the point about injuries because it's just it's just the whole story here for this team right now. But Jalen Suggs rolled his ankle in the third quarter in a game where the Magic felt like they were just completely out of it from the start. Came back and sparked a run that helped Orlando reduce a 27 point lead down to eight. He had a three point he had a three pointer got a four point play that cut the lead down to nine uh, early in the fourth quarter. And, and 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 the Magic deserve so much credit, um, or as much credit as we can give them, for showing the fight. And, and, and Jalen Suggs is right at the front and center of it. Um, we'll talk more about Jalen Suggs probably on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Magic, because he deserves a whole episode um, to really dive into some of his numbers here. But Suggs was a catalyst, was an energy, was a spark for this team to at least have a chance to win this game. For all the bad that this Magic team did, Jalen Suggs did so much right. And, and and you know, I, I, we're going to get to, again, we're going to get to injuries here in, in the last segment because I, I have to, I have to head some stuff off of the pass, but Jalen Suggs is an inspiration for this team right now. Um, just sacrificing everything to play and sacrificing everything to help his team win. But having said that, we are not in the business of celebrating and rewarding this team for turning a 20-point lead down to a 10-point loss or 10-point de- 20-point deficit into a 10-point loss. Franz Wagner said it after Monday's loss to the Charlotte Hornets, and, and this game was different from the Charlotte game in a lot of ways, but 
Franz Wagner was asked directly about this Monday night saying, you know, are we at the point where, you know, effort isn't enough? You know, we have to celebrate results. And, and Franz agreed with that statement. And, and I have to agree with that too. This team is talented enough. They are good enough to win on most nights or, or good enough to compete on almost every night. We are not here to celebrate the effort anymore. And guess what? That is growth. That is the kind of positive growth we wanted to see this year. So I can't sit here and say I'm proud of how the Magic fought. I am proud of how the Magic fought, but that's not enough anymore. But by the same token, man, the injuries are just... It's a lot right now. By the same token, the magic we're seeing out on the floor right now, outside of Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs, maybe Bull Bull too, this roster does not resemble anything like the team that they're going to be. And in that sense, it's... Almost like we're watching a tanking team in April. Not that there's a lack of effort or anything, but it's almost like we're watching a team at the end of the season right now where we're just not learning a whole lot or gaining a whole lot for the long term. And and that part's frustrating. And in that sense, yes, I am proud of the way this team fought. Because Orlando's, um, Orlando's down a whole rotation Worth of qualifiers. I I am half joking to ask on Twitter who would win a game between the Magic's healthy players and the Magic's injured players right now. I'm assuming everyone's healthy. Because the Magic right now are without their usual five. Jonathan Isaac, Gary Harris, Mo Wagner, Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony. Wendell Carter sat out the game with a plantar fascia strain that Jamal Mosley said he'd been dealing with for a little while. And Paolo Bancaro missed his third straight game with, or his fourth straight game, excuse me, with a sprained left ankle. Um, That certainly is starting to look and sound more serious than initially believed. The Magic are missing a lot. And, And frankly, this is a team that could not afford to miss very much at all. They knew they were going to miss some at the beginning of the season, but injuries have gutted this team completely. So maybe it is worth saying there are moral victories. Then again, the Orlando Magic lost this game by 18 points. They lost the first quarter 42-24 to by 18 points. At the end of the day, what the Magic are searching for is a full 48-minute effort. And maybe this team doesn't have the depth of talent to do it. Maybe they do. But they, they, they have to understand they can only work with what they have. And they got to find 48 minutes out of it. Because for the second straight game, Orlando was blown out from the opening tip. From the first quarter of the game, the Magic just were not engaged, were not, I don't know if prepared is the right word, but they were not into the game plan. They did not come out with the force that they need to and the desperation, the urgency they need to play with, considering how many people they're down. And that's really the big thing that needs to change. More than anything else, we, we could dive into X's and O's. We could, we're going to dive into the box score here in a second. We're going to talk more specifically about this game. But at the end of the day, what needs to happen is if the Magic are going to be this hurt, if they know their margin for error is going to be this small, they need to outwork everybody. And the Charlotte Hornets took it to them Monday. The Minnesota Timberwolves took it to them on Wednesday. From the very start, buried them. You can live with missed shots. Mo Bamba missed some open shots early that killed their confidence. You cannot live with a team that isn't getting into it defensively. That isn't on the same page defensively. If anything, what this period where the Magic are dealing with so many injuries has to do is it has to sharpen the team's focus. And instead, it just feels like the Magic are loose. The Magic are not tied together, and haven't got it all figured out. The focus that we saw in the wins over Dallas and Phoenix is gone. And that's the part that's unacceptable because 
we can clearly see how much this team fights. We can clearly see how much guys are giving to this team. Jalen Suggs, I, I joked about this during the game, Jalen Suggs is being held together with scotch tape and, and industrial strength glue. That dude should not have been back in that game. But as Jalen Suggs put it after the game, he's not miss, he doesn't want to miss any more games. It's going to take a lot to have him sit out, and he's going to play through pain to help his team. Not that other guys, not other injured players won't or aren't capable of. Um, that, that, again, we will get to that at the end of the show. I want to make sure I make that point. But the bottom line is this. This Magic team, while undermanned, while certainly struggling with, with finding rotations and having to play Admiral Schofield as their backup center to, to keep their big lineup intact, the bottom line is this Magic team has to do more and has to be more precise. And that precision, that focus is going to help the team when everyone gets back together again so soon, or not, not so long from now. Right now, the Magic both have a lack of talent because of the injuries and a lack of depth because of the injuries, but they have a lack of focus. And that part is inexcusable. Especially if they want to be the team they want to be. We're going to go through the final box score, talk a little bit about the injuries coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. You can browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget from across the U.S., uh, United Kingdom, Canada, and coming soon to Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Test drive that electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits in your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. So forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo. It's actually pronounced Taro. Taro Taro.com. That's Taro, T-U-R-O. That's why I was saying Taro. I should be my copy. Again, forget boring rental cars. Find your drive at Taro.com, T-U-R-O.com. Today's podcast also brought to you by Built Bar. Now, now we're going to pause the podcast here for a second. Not literally pause because then you won't hear me talk. Okay, so so you ready? Good, because you got to try this. I'm talking about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. Cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, and coconut brownie topper. The white chocolate peppermint granola, it's built take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasting. And candy cane brownie puff. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. I had a built puff earlier today, and it was delicious. First off, for anyone who hasn't tried built bars before, you must be new to the podcast. So welcome aboard. They're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. That 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 was that was a pun. They're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories. Just 130 calories for most of these bars. So just sink your teeth into that first bite and it will change your life forever and change how you think about protein bars forever too. I'm not kidding. There will be a time before you tried these new built flavors and a time after. Um, We won't mark that time because I'm not getting into that. And the magical, wonderful time afterwards. You're probably wondering which new flavors are my favorite. Well, that's an unanswerable question. I have a few. I've still got some birthday cake from a little while back. Those are delicious. Um, any, Any chocolate brownie. I'm all for the cookie dough ones. Actually, very, very good too. Frankly, they're all unbelievable. I really haven't encountered a Built Bar flavor that I didn't like, and I'm a relatively picky eater. They're all different, so you can order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Built, you gotta try it. So, get 50% off your order right now by using code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Again, 15% off your order right now by using code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. 
We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic your first listen today. For your second listen, go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. The Orlando Magic fall to the Minnesota Timberwolves 126-108. to A frustrating defeat for the Orlando Magic. Um, on a number of levels, like I said, Orlando just got punched in the mouth very, very early in this game. Um, they were staggered. They fell by. They fell down by as much as 27 points. So again, reducing a 27-point deficit down to eight, you know, with about nine and a half, ten minutes to go, the Magic really did have a chance to kind of make a push um, and, and win this game. Um, but it, it, the reason why the Magic weren't able to do that is a fatigue, a lot of energy expended to get back into this game, and b. They made mistakes. Um, credit to Minnesota. They made some big shots to keep them at bay. They gave up that big run. Uh, they struggled with Orlando's 2-3 zone a little bit. Orlando was a lot more engaged defensively in the second half. They kind of found that defensive groove that they were missing in the first half. Uh, and so in that way, this was different from the Charlotte game. Orlando made a real push to try and try and win this game. Whereas Charlotte, they never really made a run at the lead. Um, Orlando found their groove. They found their offense. Um, but... They started missing some shots. They got they got tired. They looked fatigued. They really had to lean on their starters because they don't have anyone else that can score. Um, so, really, this game came down to the way the Magic approached the start of the game. Again, Char- uh, Minnesota outscores Orlando 42-24 in the first, first quarter. A- and, uh, Anthony Edwards has 19 points. And five three-pointers. Defense was just soft. Um, no other way to describe it. The Magic were switching, but you know we've seen this before over and over and over again with the Magic's defense. They're, when they're switching and they're locked in, they're very, very good. This is a very dangerous team defensively when they're really locked in and on the same page. When they're not on the same page, when they're ducking under screens, when they're switching, when they're switching late or sending two to the ball or two away from the ball has happened at, at a few times in this game. Um, when the communication is not good and they're not sure what they're doing, that's when they run into a lot of trouble. So, um, you know, again, it, it it was a frustrating effort for the Orlando Magic. Anthony Edwards finishes with 35 points. Again, 19 of them coming in the first quarter. Um, he was 7 for 13 from deep, 12 for 20 uh, from the floor overall. Carl Anthony Towns is 30 points, 10 for 15 shooting. D'Angelo Russell scores 11. A lot of that coming in the fourth quarter. Orlando did a really good job on D'Angelo Russell until the fourth quarter. He made some big shots, and and that was that was really it for this team. Um, Minnesota shoots fifty two point three percent from floor, just twelve for thirty six from beyond the arc. Again, five three pointers from Anthony Edwards. I think he was five for nine in the first uh, in the first uh, first quarter. Um, that kind of just set the tone for the game. Orlando turns the ball over sixteen times for twenty two points. So again, Orlando put themselves in a bit of a hole. They weren't locked in defensively. They 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 really they really had to fight uphill. To get back into this, they they trailed by as much as twenty seven points, but they did fight. They did they did make that fight. They did uh, you know cli- you know try and climb out of it. And 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 there were good performances and performances worth noting. Jalen Suggs uh, was just fantastic in this game. I, I will say this: I, I do think Jalen Suggs is starting to figure some things out. Um, he was really the catalyst for the Magic to come back into this game, and, and a lot of it's just his toughness, um, his ability to keep pressure. Uh, on defenses and, and just his growing confidence. You can tell when he's confident and when he's making good plays and he's playing under control. Minnesota did speed him up a little bit at times, but largely he was the one controlling the pace of the game and 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 making things happen happen and forcing Minnesota to react to him. He scores 23 points, 8 for 17 shooting, 5 for 11 from deep, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. He does have 3 turnovers, but um, overall, I... I I, I was really impressed with Jalen Suggs in this game. I think he just did so many good things. And, and again, overall, the good was so much better than the bad. Um, you know, defensively, he was guarding Anthony Edwards. Um, I, I, I think, again, a lot of Edwards' shots and the rhythm that he got into came because they were switching. They were switching one through five. Um, and so Edwards would run a pick and roll with, uh, with especially Rudy Gobert um, and... Suggs would go with Gobert, but Bowl would kind of hang back, and so Edwards would just pop threes over them. You, you can't, if you're going to switch, you can't dip under screens like that. You can't just soft switch like that. You need to be into the ball. You, this, the guy who is switching needs to be up at the level of the screen, 
and needs to like kind of be a seamless transition, a seamless pass. It's like passing a baton. Um, it needs to be a seamless pass to the new defender. And again, when the Magic were able to do that, they were able to get some stops. They were able to play well. Um, but when they're kind of soft, when they have their big set, stepping back like that, that's when they really run into trouble. And again, Anthony Edwards really took advantage of that. Um, Bull Bull had a, a decent game. Um, career high, 26 points. Offensively, uh, look, offensive Bull Bull is fantastic. 26 points, 12 for 21 shooting, 0 for 4 from deep, um, 12 rebounds, 3 block shots. Like, there, there are a lot of good things that Bull Bull does. And, and he's active and he's, and, and, and he's flying around a little bit. Um, offensively, like I like again, the physics don't make sense. Um, he just does things, and he's very he's just naturally understands what he's supposed to do with the ball. And I, I think a lot of defenders are still surprised that a player of his size can do the things that he does. Defensively, though, but again, on the same token, same token, even defensively, um, you know, he's he's c- good at coming from the weak side. As long as he's in the paint, he's solid. But defensively, um, he is. You know, not the greatest defender. A defender. Um, I think that's very, very clear. Um, and turnover wise, he he still just makes a ton of mistakes. Four turnovers. Um, you know, some of it just losing the ball. You know, trying to dribble through traffic, trying to do a little bit too much with the ball. Some of it still off dribble handoffs and just basic execution errors. Um, you know, again, so more bad, more good than bad here from Bull Bull because he you know scored twenty six points and 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 it was a leading scorer for the team, but um. He still, I think, has has some work to do and, 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 again, just needs to continue refining. And, again, I think when the Magic do get healthy, we will still see Bull Bull. We will still see him in the lineup, but he will, um, his role will be reduced, and I think, I, I think probably for the better for this team overall. Franz Wagner um, really struggled in this game. He still scores 18 points, 7 for 17 shooting. He did get into a little bit of run. Six rebounds, four assists. Um, no player on this team is probably more frustrated than Franz Wagner. You can see it on his face. Um, he he spent a lot of this game trying to match Anthony Edwards and trying to kind of lift this team up when they were struggling and trying to just kind of be the propelling force. He did a great job getting to the basket. Rudy Gobert did a good job challenging his shots, making making his finishes around the rim really, really tough. Um, but overall, you know, uh, Fra- you know, Franz has got to find that mid-range game. He's really good at getting to the rim. He's going rimmer, rimmer bust. It was the same way last year. Um, you know, again, just he, I think right now Franz is pressing. Um, and and again, he's press. You know, again, it's like it's like we said with Paolo Bancaro for a couple games. Eighteen points on seven for seventeen shooting is a bad game for Franz Wagner at this point. That's that's the expectation we have for Franz Wagner is 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 he's going to be productive and and do a lot of really good things and. He did. He's he did a lot of really good things in this game still, and and he's forcing the issue. He's getting to the basket. He's getting to the rim. There's just that next level that he has to get to, and especially right now when there just aren't weapons on the floor to ease his burden to to take the pressure off of him. His frustration is written on his face. Um, this dude wants to win. This is the exact guy you want on the floor right now. It's the exact guy you want on this team when things do come together because he's a team player. But he wants to win, and he expects a lot out of himself. So, you know, th- this is a struggle right now, but better things will come. Um, the last guy to mention here, Mo Bamba, eight points, four for eleven shooting, uh, starting for Wendell Carter, zero for five from beyond the arc. Uh, I think he was zero for four in, uh, from beyond the arc in the first half. He had a lot of good looks. He had a lot of open looks, and, and honestly. If Mo Bamba hits two of those threes in the first half that he missed, or especially in the first quarter that he missed, those wide open three point looks that he missed, um, this is a very different game. I think. Um, I think when you're undermanned like the Magic are right now, you need success early. You need to hit some open shots. You need to be in the game early. You need to give yourself a chance. Um, and you know you can live with made or missed shots for the most part, but there's a lot more pressure to make shots and to put yourself in a good position to win when you're as undermanned as the Magic are right now. Um, and that's where the Magic are, is they are just severely undermanned and and got got hit pretty hard here. Um, pretty pretty hard here, just, just, no, just no other way around it. Again, Orlando needed more from Obamba. They needed more raw production. It's just, it isn't about process. The, the Magic needed some results and, and they didn't get it from him. Uh, Orlando shoots 45.2% from floor, so they definitely struggle on that end. Just 9 for 35 from beyond the arc, 15 for 17 from the foul line. 
they still do a lot of good things. You know, there, there are a lot of indicators here uh, of consistency from the Magic that, that you do like. 12 offensive rebounds, um, 20 second chance points. Minnesota only outscores them in the paint 58 to 56. Um, Magic are 28 for 47 in the paint. So, you know, Orlando gets a lot of the opportunities they want. The big difference is defensively early on, the Magic were just lax. They just weren't dialed in defensively. They have 16 turnovers for 22 points. So the turnover is not as much of an issue as previous games, but still a big issue. And Minnesota has 30 fast break points. Um, you know, again, Orlando just was not there defensively. And so, again, I'm happy the Magic were able to reduce the 27-point deficit down to 8 points. I'm glad that they showed that fight, that they they showed that perseverance, and, and, and that they didn't give up on the game. That by the same token, even with how undermanned the Magic are, they broke even the final three quarters. Um, yeah, they lost the second by seven. They won the third by seven. They tied the fourth. And and you know you could say, well, Minnesota had a big lead. They let go. They let go of the rope a little bit. And sure, that might be the case. But at the end of the day, Orlando's got to come out with the right intensity. Um, if the bench is giving away games, so be it. But the starters gave this game away from the start, from the beginning. The starters did not play with the intensity and focus that they need to play with if they're going to be successful, um, especially with the injuries that they're facing. Um, and that's the second straight game that's happened, and that's frankly inexcusable. The Atlanta Magic fall to the Minnesota Timberwolves 126-108. to They start a three-game road trip Friday night in Chicago, uh, and then they'll play the Indiana Pacers So uh, twice. So some, an opportunity to get back on the horse, now back on the road. Orlando's homestand is done. They finished 3-4 and four on the homestand. We'll talk more about that tomorrow on the podcast as well. When we come back, we will chat a little bit about injuries um, because, frankly, I am frustrated by some of the, some of the talk um, about injuries and talk about how the team is handling injuries. I, I will agree with some of the, the problems, but we need to kind of set the record straight a little bit on, on some of these things coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got it all at BetOnline.net, including Rookie of the Year odds, including the next coach to get fired, um, including daily games as well. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline too. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. So, I spent a good chunk of my evening um, watching this game and, and, and feeling the frustration that a lot of Magic fans were feeling and, you know, joking at times about just how injured this team is. Um, like I said, we'll put a poll up, I guess. Um, the mad, the, the, pla- the, the players, the magic have sitting are, are full rotations worth of good players. Uh, you know, the magic are missing at least six, if not seven rotation level players right now. And watching this team try and survive without them is incredibly frustrating. So before we just dive into some of the some of the things I, I've been dealing with um, and, and, and some of the things that I feel necessary to come out and say um, is frustration about injuries is perfectly warranted. Um, Jamal Mosley even said after the game, you know, he was asked by Dan Savage of OrlandoMagic.com about trying to pull this team together through the injuries. And, you know, usually when we ask that question... Jamal Mosley says, you know, it's a next man up mentality. You know, we we tell the guys, you know, you can't control who's in or out of the lineup, but when your number's called, we need you to step up. And 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 look, that's a cliche, but it is 100% true. I mean, you know, Steve Clifford used to say all the time, I don't worry about who's unavailable that day. I worry about the guys that I need to coach and need to prepare for the next game. I worry about the guys that are available to me and, and to some extent that is just a great outlook is control the things you can control. You can't control when guys are coming back. You can't control who you have available. When you, when the coach is given the list of players he has to work with, those are the players he works with. Plain and simple. Um, you know, so Jamal Mosley said after the game, he can't. He couldn't lie. He's, he he is frustrated as much as everyone else is by the injuries, and 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 it's 
there's just very little that anyone can do. Um, you could blame Jeff Weltman for, you know, signing players and it, for injury prone players and not, you know, giving this team kind of that cushion. But at the same time, you know, how could you expect Gary Harris to tear his meniscus? Um, you know, for Mo Wagner to suffer a, a foot sprain that's kept him out. For you know Wendell Carter to be playing with plan, uh, through through plantar fascia sprain. Um, you know, for Paolo Bancaro to twist his ankle really badly in that loss to the Houston Rockets a, a week a, a week and a half ago. You cannot predict this stuff. You cannot. You know, you can prepare. You can plan for this stuff. But at the end of the day, it, it is random. Um, there 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 is nothing you can do. Um, and Magic fans are certainly frustrated by it. Um, you know, they've been frustrated for a long time by the lack of clarity on where players are at and what they're doing and, and, and how close they are to returning. They've been frustrated by, uh, you know, just by the amount of injuries. And, and, and I'm with you there. I'm frustrated by it too because I want to see this team play. I want to see this team at full strength. I want to see what this team's future can be. This season is about the future, and, and it's hard to see that future when half the roster's on the shelf. Um, I will continue to say, you know, none of the injuries that the Magic are facing right now, outside of the guys who are recovering from long-term injuries, are long-term injuries. We will see Cole Anthony back. Um, he is, you know, I was at shoot-around Wednesday morning. He is back on the court, you know, not doing a ton of work yet, but he is back on the court doing some on-court work. You know, he told Kobe Price that he's expecting he, he believes he can be back around Thanksgiving or early December. You know, we're about to enter that window. Um, so again, for those who think that the Magic do not give timelines or the Magic are withholding of timelines, A, there's a reason they do that. And, and the Paolo Bancaro thing is a perfect example why. Um, but uh, for those that are like the Magic don't give timelines, well, Cole Anthony gave a timeline to, Co- you know, or not Cole Anthony, but a source gave a timeline to, to Kobe Price last week. Um, or, you know, Literally, Markel Fultz, Jonathan Isaac, and Gary Harris all spoke to Kobe Price over the last week and a half um, in one-on-one interviews. Um, I'm not breaking news. Um, that's not that's not my expertise or my for- forte, so I would encourage you all to read Kobe Price of the Lender Sentinel whenever you can. Um, we know more about where these players are at than we have known for several years with this front office. We know that Jonathan Isaac is playing five-on-five, five and, and as reporters including myself, including, you know, including Kobe, asked the question to Jamal Mosley, uh, are, are, is, is Jonathan Isaac doing anything more? Is Gary Harris doing anything more? We're getting the update that, you know, they're still doing the same thing. So, you know, we know Jonathan Isaac and Gary Harris are playing five on five with coaches at, at the very least. Um, you know, Markel, you know, I was at the training facility today. Markel Fultz is doing shooting drills. Um, he was doing a fun, and I don't understand the nece- necessity of it, but doing a shooting drill where he is literally kind of starting sitting on a one of those ergonomic, you know, balls and popping up and shooting threes and hitting them from the logo. Um, so I think that's supposed to ease, give him the the, the the force of a jump without having him jump, perhaps. Um, so, you know, we could see that they're doing stuff. Um, but I think I think that there's just still this frustration that guys aren't back. Um, that the injuries are just mounted and, and there's just, it's a feeling of powerless, powerlessness because at the end of the day, these guys are hurt. You know, honestly, like I've seen a lot of people question, why are these guys playing? Why can't these guys play through these injuries? Well, Marco Fultz had a scan, you know, as, as he told Kobe Price of the Orlando Sentinel, he had a scan on his foot. The fracture has not healed. He is not playing. He is not clear to play because that fracture is not healed. And playing on it, you know, brings the risk of it getting worse, of it being, of it re-aggravating. And, and the Magic don't want that. Um, there was confusion a bit over Paolo Bancaro. Um, he went through parts of practice on Saturday, um, but he felt sore the next day. The Magic did not clear him to play. He is still sore. I, I, I saw him in the practice facility on Wednesday. He is still going through rehab. He's still going through treatment. But he is not clear to play. His ankle is still really tender. And, you know, as, as far as I know, he has actually sprained his right ankle. And there's concern 
that if he plays on a, a left ankle that is, you know, not 100%, that he could further damage the right ankle. And, and then you're out Paolo Vancaro for even longer. These guys are hurt. I, I, I don't know how to say that. You know, Wendell Carter, according to Mosley, has been playing through this plantar fascia, fascia issue for a while. I think that's incredibly risky, personally, because plantar fascia issues have long-reaching impacts. Um, those are really difficult injuries to heal. Um, you know, if you don't know what the plantar fascia is, it's the it's the muscle on the very bottom of your foot. Um, it's extremely painful. But the last thing you want there is a plantar, fa- plantar fascia tear, because that's a mo- that's a month and a half, two months. If, you know, on a normal timeline, on a magic timeline, who knows what that is. The injuries are frustrating. Everybody is frustrated by the injuries. Fans are frustrated. The coaching staff's frustrated. The players are frustrated. They want to be out there. You know, Marco Fultz and Jonathan Isaac both said, if if I, I could be out there tomorrow, I would. They want to play too. But there is rhyme to this reason. And, you know, we don't need to get a constant update. Um, you know, I, I have, I have asked Magic PR. I've, I've asked Jeff Weltman directly at times about injured players, and, and and the philosophy behind their injuries. And and they've said they've honestly told me on several occasions, like, you know, if there was an update to give, we'd give you an update. Um, there's just not an update to give. These things take time. It's a process to get to get healed and to get healthy. I the, I get the frustration. I get it. Um, it's keeping this team from realizing its potential and, and, and taking those next important steps. But you know what else is keeping this team from reaching its potential? Those injuries getting worse. Bringing guys back too soon and having to sit them again. That was, you know, that that's a huge issue. And so, yes... Do the Magic need to, in their next round of signings and, and as they evolve this team, do they need to sign players that don't have injury histories? Yeah, I think that's probably fair. You know, Jonathan Isaac has a long injury history now. Markel Fultz, you know, it's a different injury. It's not the same injuries as he's had before, but he's got a long, he's got a laundry list of injuries. The Magic probably need to take that under consideration as they're evaluating things, but at the same time, this stuff's random, man. This stuff is very random. You can't prepare for Cole Anthony to tear an oblique muscle. There's no planning for that. Yes, Jonathan Isaac has been out forever and and, and is closer than ever to playing. He's going to play this year. And whatever final checks, the Magic are being super cautious. And... Frankly, they've been very upfront about why they're cautious. He hasn't played in two years. They don't want to just throw him out there until they feel he's ready to handle it and ready to stay on the court. And that's something that Isaac understands and at least publicly agrees with. Could the Magic be a little bit more aggressive about bringing guys back? Perhaps. But we're also dealing with incomplete information. We don't know where these guys are. We're certainly not doctors to tell anyone anything about that. And while there are normal timelines for players to return from these kinds of injuries, what is normal anyway? Because each patient, each person is different. Their body heals differently. And so I get the frustration. It's real. And you can see what the magic are missing on the court. No offense to the guys that are playing. The Magic need the injured players back. They're eager to have these guys back. They know the help they're going to bring. But by the same token, there's just not a lot you can do but wait. And that's why you focus on the guys you have. You focus on what you do have. You focus on what you are working with. And you focus on making that group better. Because God knows they can be better right now. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, 
and all the fun places on the podcast to your podcast-enabled listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.